Also nice to be sitting here, I should mention, in, in the Miami Cigar Lounge under our friend's picture. <laughs> right there, right? He's looking And my brother. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the, the most interesting man in the cigar oh, business. Oh, yeah. 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 That's great. That's yeah. really nice. And we yeah, appreciate nice all guy. your support. Yeah, well, he's... He's at, we, we, we need a day and a half to do a Q&A with Nestor. He was vaccinated with a photograph. Hey, you need that? No, 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 not yet. I, we don't have enough, uh, uh, exactly, <laughs> precisely. There's, there's, there's not have, enough. There's no, there's, well, at least four hours, please. Right. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> yeah. Can't be done. So. Those are those are things that we have to look forward to, Don Fernando, to to a new size in yeah. Guillermo, and uh, and, and the some, 107 Maduro. Yeah, a finally, Maduro. Oh. wow, <laughs> finally. <laughs> yeah. And what's the wrapper going to be? Is it Mexican? We're working on that. Yeah. Still working ah, on that. Ah, so it's a secret. Oh, wow. So when you send the, the sneak preview of Don Fernando. You can send a uh, you can send an example of the 107 Maduro, and we'll uh, you know we'll be happy to uh, to give you the, uh, the 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 universal feedback. Okay, no, that's which good. will doubtless be send more. We can't make up our mind, <laughs> you know. Oh, gee, we like these, but we really don't know. Send more. That's great. That's great. Well, we you know, this is just uh, to me. You know, we talked about this when we when we smoked the Benjis. This is like a little time machine. It's a uh, it's 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 impossible to walk in a cigar store on a regular basis and pick something up that that smokes like this that gives you that um, example of what time what what a what a beneficial. I mean, to me, you buy something like this and you go, okay, well, I I need a bigger humidor, you know. Because I, I need the ability to age cigars so they smoke like this. And there's just, you know, we're, we're, fewer and fewer people are, uh, are thinking about the idea that uh, a cigar deserves the time to mature and that it should be valued appropriately. That's why I think these are such a terrific bargain. Well, you know, George, uh, not all of the cigar you can age eight years. Oh, of course. I mean, with the proper condition. Because they will turn, well, they'll lose what they're. They'll lose their their, their integrity. Yeah. I mean, a blend has to be created to survive that long. It has to be. It has yeah. to have uh, excellent bones, so to speak. It's got to be got to be built to last. Mm -hmm. I mean, these yeah, that's important. You to know fit that fit that respect. Don Fernando's will age beautifully, as we already know. Cien yeah. Años do that. Yeah. No doubt, the 107 Maduros will age beautifully. So buy them by the hundred. <laughs> All right. What else, guys? Are all the uh, Cien Anjos that you have here, the Lanceros, Caprios, are those all eight years? Are they all in the same? No. Or is it just those particular Robustos? Yeah, those. Those Robustos. The, the Lanceros, we, we add that to the line, I don't remember, probably five years ago. Yeah. yeah. 2006, I think. Yeah. 2006. And, uh, and the, the Preferido Cien Anjos also. Yeah. Well, that was a a stroke, you know. I mean, what a what a genius move that was to make a uh, a Cien Anjos in that, you know. People yeah, automatically yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, and they line up. Fortunately, uh, we we have enough left here uh, that that people can, you know, reacquaint themselves with the taste now. Guillermo Leone 107. Yeah. And 107 obviously uh, has a little bit of a head start. You mm -hmm. know, Guillermo yeah. Leone can take it over, trust me. Mm -hmm. You know, when you compare. One year, one year yeah, ahead. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. The, the uniqueness of that flavor. Z? Being a company that's 108 years, you're. You've been able to ride waves, and you've been able to, you know, see almost the history of the cigars of where where it's been, where it's going. Where do you think the next big thing is going to be? In cigars? Well, 
107 Maduros. You mean a big thing like... Uh, what's the next fad or what's the next trend in the business? I think when Cuba opens. I mean, being, being uh, honest. Yeah. And in the event that that was to happen, can you foresee um, buying Cuban tobacco and making a, uh, a La Aurora that has a Cuban blend? Definitely. As I buy from Nicaragua and right. from everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, you can I'm, send I'm those oriented too. to, to when the you, consumer. When you, make those, when you make those, you can send those here too. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll be happy to test those out I can for send you, you some. Yeah. I can send you some now. Yeah. You've already experimented? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Long time ago. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. What do you, what, in here, right, exactly, precisely. No, go ahead and break the law. You, you, you bring them yourself, you know. That's nice, you know. Let's get this, you let's go get this there recording, too. Right, remember, Jerry, this is the part of the tape you actually do edit out, you know, where he goes, oh, sure, I'll send you some. No, thanks. Right, exactly. Then you can taste an Epcot, right? Experimental prototypical cigar of tomorrow. Um, do you remember the first cigar you smoked? Bristol. Bristol Especial? Yes, yes. That's a big boy cigar. Oh, yeah. yeah how old were you, 10? 12. <laughs> 12. 12. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And let me tell you, George, I don't want to remind that. Right. Oh. I was lying down for, for hours. <laughs> wow. And the only thing that made him feel better was Presidente beer. Yeah, not at that time. Yeah. Not at that time. Thank goodness. Huh? The president of the team in 13. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the 1492? 95. Yeah. Did that change? Did you change the blending uh, in that? That was probably a couple of years ago. Now it doesn't seem like it changed. No. Not at all. Depends who, who, which one you had. Probably you. you, you, you you Try a different size. Different, no, different wrappers. Yeah. That's the one that have yeah. six different spot. wrappers. Right. Yeah. It has a double band, so yeah. you can you can yeah, see. Yeah, so you what, can identify uh, which wrapper it is. Yeah. So we can revisit those. So, are we going to in February to a Pro Cigar Festival? Why not? Yeah. I'll translate. Right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you have to, you, you that's a tough job. You're going to, if, if you're going to be the documentarian of the trip, you know, you're, you're not going to get a chance to sleep much. Not to a camera on my head. Right, that's exactly. That's video editing for sure. No, the, don't you know he doesn't edit? <laughs> he doesn't edit. It's, it, it is what it is. Exactly. Stream it live. That's it. It's all captured. Go ahead, Z. Going back to the whole fat thing, what do you think of the, the move to everyone building a 60 ring game scar right now? I don't know. I see so many changes uh, to thick cigars, and then, you know, I'm developing an 80 ring gauge cigar there. Wow. Yeah. And you have flat. to be licensed. You have to be licensed to. Oh smoke. yeah, <laughs> it's a weapon. One oh seven. One oh seven. And then we get a one oh seven again. No. no. Okay, so, but actually, he's, he's, uh, he's on to a thread that, that makes sense. Um, what would you say, mm -hmm. in, from, from your point of view, from watching what market demand is and, and, and how the consumer is, uh, is behaving now, what would you say is the biggest change? What's the, what's the thing that's most different today than it was back when you had the responsibility to take all this over and reshape the business? The so from The complexity. Of the cigars. Of the cigars. Of the blends. And the uh, strength, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I personally I think 
that the, the, the consumer co is, is confused about it. Yeah. Because you have more strength, you have less flavor. Yeah. Because the strength overwhelms, yeah. I mean. Covers it up. Yeah. You don't, you're not, a, you, the, yeah. the subtlety and the nuance and complexity do not mm -hmm. come through. They mm -hmm. don't show. But don't you, don't you see a little bit of response that, that people are starting to, to buy certain cigars that represent more subtle blends, that it isn't all about strength now? I think that we're starting to, to watch that They're happen. starting to change yeah. again, yeah. Yeah, it's not only uh, full body. Right. Yeah. It's not the single drumbeat of demand, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stronger, stronger, stronger. Mm -hmm. We've, we sort of crested and, and, and started to move back from that pendulum so people can explore flavors without being knocked out by their cigar. Yep. And size. And sizes. Yeah. They're relentlessly growing, except that in the midst of all that, all of a sudden a demand has emerged for people that will smoke Lanceros. And you know, Lonsdale still haven't quite made it back into the mix yet, mm -hmm. but, but Lanceros certainly, you know, which yeah. is a huge contrast. And there are beautiful, I mean, and, and I, that's why I was so happy with the, with the Guillermo Leon that there was a Corona in it. A straight classic, you know, the definitive yeah. shape. That's a classic and, shape. And, and so is the Lancero. Yes, exactly. Well, yeah, mm. exactly. Traditional uh, mm -hmm. Vitola de Galera. All right. Everybody else? You're all good? Yeah, Rich? No uh, back when you were introducing the Guillermo uh, Leon, and you were here uh, at a dinner with the great Mhm. You, uh, I remember you explained how difficult it was to create that cigar because of the different blends. I was wondering if you could re explain that to the people here because I found that very fascinating. How difficult you know, uh, I explained later. Uh, it was, I, I was looking for a cigar that, that fits 100%. That was me, you know? And I look and look for it until I got it. Well, to, yeah. that, to, to Rich's point, when, when I smoked the prototype in the Dominican Republic, I think we were up to maybe 30, that was probably the 30th more than planned. Yeah. Several months later when we, we went to that dinner, I think it was in July of 2010, thereabouts. Um, uh, I believe the number was up to 50. Yeah. So, yeah, because I, I'm impressed. I love that cigar and I'm impressed with all the different flavors that you have in there. Mm -hmm. you As you smoke it. it. As you smoke it, because yeah. it changes. Yeah, because it changes. And they change. It's a beautiful and, and and I think the, and the body is, is it's very you know, satisfying. It's rich, yeah. but it's not overwhelming. It's not it's never it's never uh, you know you can smoke one of those cigars and right. and you and you and you're and you're experiencing the you, finish and then you want to smoke yeah. another one. It's experience of a lot of different cigars, a lot of different flavors and but it has its own signature to it. And the other thing that I'm amazed about is the consistency of that. How you can be that complex and be that consistent is definitely, mm -hmm. uh, deserve a lot of credit for that. And consistency across the shapes, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's oh, the, that's that's the, 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 the thing that, that, you know, the, the, the family blend, the flavor shows the yeah. same. Not that there aren't differences, well, in, but, but. cigars can't do that. No, that's right. And if you, you basically smoke one size and that's it. The pleasure of that cigar is being able to smoke and have that signature flavor across different shapes and have unique experiences. Yeah. The and same. All the work. I, yeah. Thank you. For that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How long ago did the lion go back to the uh, the old school? The change in the uh, in the in the Leon How? lion. How? Was that 96, 97, or was it later than that? You mean start to yeah, change? Yeah, the change, yeah, the evolution. Remember the first change when I, when I started heading the company was La Aurora. Right. We changed to a white. Right. Uh, uh, the background and the band. The background. Yeah. And then, then the lion changed. Right. Then the original Preferidos, you remember, mm -hmm. was very old. And we changed the lion, only the lion, mm -hmm. to, to maintain the same... Uh, the image, the, the lion image. across, yes. Uh, and, and then the 1495. Right. Cien, no, Cien Años. Cien Años. It's the same one. Huh? Right, this. And uh, we're keeping two. Now there is 
a new one, the one of seven, mm -hmm. and we launched the Cameroon with right. in, in wood, wooden yep. box, and the Corojo with the same. Now we stick to it. Yeah, we're gonna keep the old La Aurora yeah. because there is a lot of uh, There's so much history there yeah. and everybody identifies with that. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of smokers. Yeah. 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 Great. Yep. Uh, no, the other thing that always impressed me is the, uh, what George was talking about this earlier, the Aurora cigars in the, uh, in the tubes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that when I was first starting out, that, that was a cigar that would always be my special cigar. Not only the shape and the flavor, but just the packaging. Just made you feel special. What? How did you decide to, to go that way? That was so unique from anything else. With that packaging? Yeah, it was, was like Christmas morning. And so. <laughs> and so. Oh no no no! It's special around. Yeah, it really was. Exactly. Well, I remember we were discussing with Danny. Danny yeah. was there, and that we need a tube for that cigar, and nobody nobody will thought that somebody could make a tube like yeah. this because that, that was like and really and Danny perfect. say I can get someone so that's Nestor's son mm -hmm. oh, okay. yeah, pass away that. yeah and and we got it oh, yeah. we choose colors and yeah that's it uh, I've celebrated so many special events on that cigar um, that's very special for us yeah. it's a great presentation and you you open the cigar and the tube with the greatest sense of anticipation. You look at this beautifully made Perfecto. There's always only one sad moment, though, when you put it down in the ashtray. And you put it down when you, when you look and you go, oh, man, I wish that cigar was twice as big. Yeah. And then we can sell you a Preparito number one. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, if you can hold the ash, it will go to the end. Exactly, oh, the, yeah. the entire cigar. Oh, yeah. And no relight, the, exactly. no relight. It was well worth uh, the investment. Yeah. It still is. Yep. And, that, and, and that's part of the magic of the, of the DR, is that there's so much today that is this broad palette of flavors, extraordinary, but the quality on so many of the, of the efforts that are coming out, especially, you know, you look at the Pro Cigar Group, the, the, the consistency in manufacturing, and yet the huge diversity in terms of flavors and styles, things that are being offered, you know? In other words, the, the different approaches to mining their various brand histories, and but the flavor is, it, it's, that's probably, to me, that's the most distinctive difference, is that what you can get from the Dominican Republic today in terms of, of flavor from extremely mild. In other words, the, the, the evolution of the, the palate that, that is available to work with, both in terms mm -hmm. of the tobacco grown in the Dominican Republic and the different tobaccos that are brought in to blend with. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a quantum leap from the 1980s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the kind of seeds that yeah. we're getting now. Yeah, the, 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 the amazing diversity of, uh, of, of oh, tobacco yeah. that's grown, the techniques in fermenting, how they're, uh, mm -hmm. how they're worked in the warehouse, and the sophistication of the rollers in the factories to be able to handle these yeah. really complicated blends. Because don't forget, you know, you, you, you can have, first of all, you can have the most extraordinary tobacco in the field and completely destroy it in the barns. And then you can take beautiful material and put it in the hands of a roller who doesn't know how to make a, mm -hmm. a cigar, uh, you know, that, 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 that can't successfully combine all the elements and produce something that will, will smoke properly. And, and poor construction, it doesn't matter how good the, the tobacco is, poor construction defeats you every time. And I'm sure we've all had the unfortunate experience of going, there's a, there's a flavor here, but I, I can't get through it. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Just putting, just putting the leaf opposite way, it will yeah, change exactly. completely in the wrong direction, and and it's extraordinary. I think you know, looking at the, having visited his factory, I'm, I'm a bit biased, but <laughs> but, uh, but you know, one thing that that kind of strikes me, 
given that that was my first factory visit, is the number of eyes that are involved in the process. Oh, yeah. So when the tobacco comes in, you see people sorting it. But even when I walked onto the floor and I saw people rolling cigars, to see people rolling cigars, first of all, the molds, that's what struck me with, the molds were impeccable. Yeah. We were given the same molds that the, the, the rollers were using when we rolled our cigars. So we were, during that trip, we were, we smoked tobacco, then we were turned up, you know, they turned us around and they said, hey, fine, develop a blend of your own. And we were using those same molds. Those molds were impeccable. But to see the rollers themselves, rolling products, and then they're looking at it, and I would see rollers actually taking the cigar, looking at it two or three times, and then they're tossing it aside because they didn't like it. They tossed it aside before they gave it to the next person down the line, you know. So it, it, I think it's, you know, there's a pride in, in, at every level mm -hmm. of the process, which, which was very evident to me that when I spoke about it to other people that went to other factories, I didn't really get that sense. I other factories that people like, that they give them that freedom to, to, to make those kind of decisions. Um, but I think um, something that really strikes me about you in particular, I remember a, a conversation I had, I think, I guess maybe two years ago, at the old Draper's location in, on 14th Street in DC. Uh, Nestor was in town. The two of them are going back and forth, you know, ribbing each other. Um, the conversation stopped. Nestor, who is the distributor for La Aurora here in the United States, he turns around and take it to a point take into account that Miami Cigar started out of Nestor's garage. And no, not out of his garage, out of the trunk of his car. Out of the trunk of his car. <laughs> it's, it's much smaller than the garage itself. It went from the trunk to the garage. Right. Back in those days, yeah. but, but something that struck me, that really resonated with me, was that Nestor looks me dead in my eye and he goes, do you know how I started with Guillermo? And I said, how? He said, like this. Yeah, with a handshake. handshake. And then that started a conversation of between Nestor, Guillermo, and myself. How do we maintain the best of the industry? That that there's a certain pride that I think we're all aware of in this industry. You know, his name is on this, so there's a there, there's a there's a, a pride. His father's name is on this. His grandfather, his great grandfather. I mean, there's there's a lineage here. Um, where do you see? in the future, you're going to hand down La Aurora eventually to someone. Where do you see, how do you maintain that tradition and that sense of honor in this industry, but also bringing in the education, the technology, the savvy that we need to kind of compete in an in a, in a ever-changing marketplace? Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, Oh, yeah. uh, I hope so. I hope yeah. so. It means you have to work a little bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Because he has to grow up in the tobacco patch. Only nine more years we can give him his first cigar. <laughs> <laughs> well. We have different age limits. <laughs> Is there an educator? Is there... As George said, that nobody really left the factory. That would mean that there's an education process that goes through. Is, is that different from any place else when, you know, you start out with the company until you get to a point where you, you know, you become a roller and everything else? Is that just a constant education Well, process? you can come as a roller, but normally, normally our rollers come from, from tradition. Their father, their grandfather used to work there, you see? Yeah. So, so... They belong to, to, to the family, as I call. I don't call the factory, I call the family. And uh, for us, in, in, in our factory, number one is the human resources. And they know that. And we care about it. We give them a lot of things that probably no other factory can give them. Oh, they could, but they don't. Yeah, there's a clinic starting on the compound on the campus subsidizing the food yeah i mean and the cafeteria uniform uh, a lot of things 
and so does like the son come and work with his father and learn from his father? Or on, he, on the, he have to be at least 18, yeah? I mean, no, I mean, <laughs> he cannot go. Still, 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 still. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. But, so you see a lot of the, the older generation teaching the other generation. And, and you could see people that have 40 years working with us. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, the level of experience and commitment to the family, too, to the same thing, to the brand. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the workforce is extraordinary. Smoke. <laughs> what do you, apart from any of the La Aurora blends, what do you like to smoke? Do you smoke anything else? Sometimes Cubans. Sometimes Cubans. Sometimes from Mohenki or, I mean, from. from in Pro Cigar, you know, we smoke. Yeah, you're, you're and sharing, we, sharing we, cigars. And we meet at least once a month, the Pro Cigar members. So we exchange. And I smoke everything, normally. Now, how old is Pro Cigar? Like, how old is the Association of Dominican Manufacturers? We just celebrate the 20th anniversary, yeah. I think, yeah. And what was the what was the what was the motivation to create that for all of you? Well, at the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning, uh, we we had a big problems uh, between the factories stealing rollers and, and going to tobacco growers behind. And outbidding outbidding for tobacco yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, so sourcing, <coughs> sourcing and labor were, were big issues. Raw material and labor were big issues. But it was also really aimed at um, identifying the Dominican Republic as the leading manufacturer of the highest quality handmade cigars. And, and it, effectively, it was about creating a, uh, a good housekeeping seal of approval mm -hmm. for the cigars that were being exported because there were plenty of chinchals and there were lots of guys that were looking to poach on, on the idea in the marketplace that the Dominican Republic was this automatic guarantee of a certain level of quality, of a commitment in terms of the tobacco and the manufacturing. And this is in an era when everybody and his brother decided that their last name ended in a vowel so they could start a cigar company. And, uh, and, and, it, and it was a, a way of um, inspiring public confidence and, uh, and assuring that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the people at the, at the top were, uh, were really committed to each other and to the, the, the worldwide image of the Dominican Republic. And yeah. to be honest, <laughs> that is a, um, a very forward-thinking strategy that has certainly succeeded because you have seen Dominican cigars eclipse. You know, if you go around the world, you know, one of the things that people always say is, oh, well, Cuban cigars are, are only good because they're forbidden here, and, and it ignores, you know, their, their circumstances for sale in 131 or 140 uh, countries in, in the world. And, and yet, Prior to the 80s and the, and the evolution of the, you know, the, the, the growth of the Dominican industry, uh, everybody that was competing with uh, Cuba in different markets was always doing it on price and price alone. You know, it, it was just about we can sell you a bigger cigar cheaper. And it had nothing to do with a, uh, a commitment to quality or flavor or any particular manufacturing philosophy. And the, the evolution of Pro Cigar as a guarantor of quality and commitment mm -hmm. to consistency, mm -hmm. which is one of the hallmarks of the Dominican Republic, has meant acceptance for the cigar in marketplaces that have traditionally really been completely Cuban-oriented. So in some of the most sophisticated cigar markets in the world, aside from this one, um, Dominican cigars are now on the same stage and justifiably compared to some of the great Cuban cigars, which drives them Take for crazy example, Germany. in Havana. Yeah, Germany. And, 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 and of course, Germany has a long history of uh, fascination with the Dominican Republic because 
back in the day. A lot of tobacco used to leave the Dominican Republic in burlap bags and stop in Puerto Rico and arrive in Germany labeled product of Cuba. But, you know, uh, the, the, the thing Germany. is that, that... Germany, Germany is... Germany and was, Austria... Was 30% non-Cuban and 70% Cuban. Yeah. Now it's the opposite. 70% mm -hmm. non-Cuban. Well, and, and look, at, look at markets like the UK and France. France has, uh, has really embraced Dominican cigars in a major way, and that's the Spain. snobbiest nation on earth. Well, yeah, and the, the, the Spaniards, uh, b but because they, uh, they think they invented the cigar business. <laughs> what, about, uh, what about Asia? What about Asia? Is Asia, Asia. An important market for you? It's developing now. Yeah, and they're, they're easy to understand because they're growing consumers by leaps and bounds, but they're they're also embracing the idea of a, of a great cigar. And you know, it is a market where cigars are extraordinarily expensive. So when the Dominican Republic can offer quality, consistency, complexity of flavor at a you know significantly below the price of a Cuban cigar, it's, it's hard to ignore. So, obviously, we wish you continued success, but not too much because we don't want any La Aurora slowdowns or shortages here. Stay at work Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, George. Uh, well, thank you for coming today, because you know I'm sorry we uh, the the capitals made you wait, uh, but but we were uh, we we're really glad that you, that you came today, and we're really proud to have this cigar for sale, and we're proud that you 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 know thought enough of us to make them available to us. And I feel proud you you, you can you can have it. That's an we're, anniversary cigar. We're we're yeah. glad, and and hopefully we'll all be here for the 150th anniversary. Yeah, we will. Right? Thank you, George.